Hello, E-Rank. Welcome to another E-Rank live Q and A with Hi, not Starla, <laughs> with Pam Duffy and him, Hi, Brian. Hi. Yay. Hello, um, sadly, everyone. Starla can't make it today, so if everyone wants to leave a little a little heart for Starla, she's she's okay, but she can't be here today. So we have a Brian, which I know everybody loves anyway. I love me, so I'm hoping that you do too. <laughs> That's so wonderfully modest. That's great. <laughs> and today we're yeah. going to be doing a Q and A. So if you have any questions, pop them in as soon as you as soon as they pop into your brain and we have the ones from the group that we're going to be getting to as well yep well, that's it so if you get them you guys get them in in chat we'll catch them i'll keep an eye on them and hopefully we'll get them we don't have starla so <laughs> i'll have to keep an eye out um uh, but yeah we'll start with the questions from the group in a minute i think We've got a good chunk of people here already, so we'll be ready to start soon. Hi, good chunk of people. Good chunk of people, yeah. <laughs> Someone's going to make a YouTube channel with good chunk of people. Yeah. <laughs> Hopefully we're live on both places. There was a slight glitch on Facebook going live there, but oh. I think we've got both just now. So if you're on Facebook, can you let us know so we can check the tech technology's all working? Um, but, yeah, I think so. <laughs> It looks like we are. Awesome. Cool, cool. Right. So, um, yeah, and Jessica, same. We're live on both. Hello, Jessica. Um, right. So, Wait, we've got are a you couple. watching us on both? <laughs> we're like surround. We're surround vision. Yeah. <laughs> double double the watch time. Get on it. Everyone, everyone open 40 tap. No. Um, someone did that. I don't know if anyone watches the spiffing brit on youtube he attempted to see did a test and got everyone to open his live stream on 20 different tabs and then and it, it worked <laughs> oh did it i figured you'd need to have 20 different logins but i guess huh. no um it it worked in the sorry guys techie thing here but mm -hmm. it worked in that YouTube doesn't clear out those views till after the stream's over. So it was showing a high number. So it was getting all the extra push in Got the it. algorithm. There's <laughs> so. a lot of algorithm playing things. Like if you have your video at twice speed, people have to set it to half the half speed to watch. Now you yeah. get double the watch time for the same video. Yeah, but <laughs> Google will catch on to all oh, of they, this. Anything, any games you could play, any any ways to screw with the algorithm on YouTube, on Etsy, on anything, they catch on and then it disappears. Yeah, that is actually a cool thing to think of with Etsy and everything else. If you're trying to game the algorithm, you're in an arms race with a company that's far smarter than you, even Etsy, but yeah. don't try and game Google. <laughs> Well, they're far smarter, and they could just push the button and say, okay, you can't use our service anymore. So never try and game a service. Never try and game Etsy. If it feels like a game, don't do it, because you can be banned for that kind of thing. Exactly, yes. Right, let's dive into these questions. Um, and yeah, so Andrea started with, I'd love some clarification about the marketing and SEO in the how buyers found you stats. I seem to have lots of visits, visits from Google, but how are these coming from? Offsite ads organically? Um, Both. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I think does not clarify when it comes to uh, offsite, when it comes to that stat in um, in the how, how buyers found you. It just, it's from search engines. And if it says Google, it could have been an offsite ad. It could have been a marketplace uh, find it could have been a direct link to your shop. They don't actually break it down. Um, you can break it down using tra e ranks traffic stats if you have your Google Analytics connected to your Etsy shop and then to eRank, because um, eRank will tell you if something came from an ad or not. Um, yeah, and it, they say it, if it came from Etsy ads, I'm not sure if we even get Google ads. I can't, I'll have to check. I believe it's. Yeah. I believe it does show offsite ads. Let me just check that <laughs> cool. we'll check. We'll check this. Um, I was actually because I don't mind showing my stats because they're terrible. So, guys, I just wanted to <laughs> we can pull this up so we can actually look at real stats so we know what we're talking about. Don't judge me. 
um, I get sidetracked and don't run my Etsy shop as well as I should. But um, what she's asking about in your stats in the sh shop manager, we see how people found you and there's all the different sections and Etsy marketing and SEO is a little bit misleading, but when it's saying SEO, it's meaning you're getting found from search engines and stuff, but Etsy rolls in all, all the data into one place. It doesn't say, here's where you're getting found for offsite ads, here's where you're getting found for Google, but you can sort of, kind of calculate it here. So if you make sure the time period is 30 days, so I'm looking at that. So Etsy marketing and SEO, that's Google and all the, the other things there. I had a 178 visits. This these are I think this is the worst stats I've ever had. But anyway, um, if you go to your traffic and sales from off-site ads, then you'll see shoppers clicked on your off-site ads 58 times. So you can take one away from the other, <laughs> but that's all the data we get. Yeah. Etsy. Um but and yeah, yeah, you're right. Traffic stats shows Etsy ads, not offsite ads. Yeah, that's oh yeah, got yeah. us back. Yeah, I hope you guys aren't totally ashamed by my terrible stats, but <laughs> it's also good to see everything. But yeah, sadly, traffic stats. There's a limit to what Google Analytics is able to show us, and so a limit to what we're able to pull up, basically through the traffic stats tool. Um, just because of the data, what Etsy's giving to Google and everything. Exactly. Um, but still, there's, <laughs> oh, we've got some more questions coming in. But I wanted to get to the second one, if I can find what, what window I'm using. The second one that we had in the group, and then we'll get into your questions in chat. So keep them coming, guys. Uh, but Jessica asked a great question. Here's a question I've seen bounce around recently. Is it ever okay to use a trademark name if someone is selling an item that's an accessory for something like a tablet or a phone case? Can they use the brand name of the item it's compatible with? Yes and no. Um, <laughs> always go to the manufacturer's website. Usually I just Google, if it's an Apple product, type Apple trademark licensing, and they have a page that tells you the exact terminology you can use. You might be able to say case for Apple device, but you have to make sure that you're not claiming to be Apple. Like there, there, there's some, some terminology that you can use and that you can't use, and they're very, very specific about it. So make sure that you're using the, the exact terminology that you're allowed to use. So yes, you can. You just have to be very careful. Yeah, it's such a good question because people... and. Yeah, before we go too deeply into it, even if we do, we are not trademark experts. No. Brian's advice is correct, but always get advice from proper experts, yeah. basically. But with any trademark things, the best advice is always you can't use it unless you have permission, pretty much. So something like I know a lot of the print-on-demand companies, if they're offering – up things like phone cases they have the rules there this is how you're allowed to do it this is what you're allowed to say and the same if you go to apple you go to a lot of these places even if you're talking about etsy etsy has its rules for how to use its trademark everywhere it does if you're selling canva designs they have the rules for how you're allowed to speak about canva so check out all of all of these places and see what what their rules are but that's that's the only way of anything trade right if somebody else made it or designed it or owns it then you need their permission before you're allowed to use it in any way that's exactly the... even with print on demand if it's a t-shirt you might not be able to say it's a gildan t-shirt unless they give permission that you're allowed to do that because that's their brand name absolutely yeah and some of them have been some of them are very protective and you're not allowed to say, and then others are like, absolutely say that that's what that is. So you you have to check all the rules. It is quite a minefield, but it's a minefield for a good reason. As Brian kind of alluded to in his answer, it's to make sure if someone buys an Apple phone and then they go and buy an Apple phone cover, 
and they feel that it's come from Apple and it's bad quality, then you've hurt their brand yeah. when they had absolutely nothing to do with it. So that's that's kind of why people protect their trademark. So, yeah. And that's why that terminology is very specific. You you might not be able to say it's for a Samsung device. You might be able to say it fits a Samsung device. It's 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 tiny, but it makes a big difference for their brand recognition and and not hurting their brand or anything like that. Exactly. Yes. So yeah, just to just check it out. Always look into it. Always look into it. Yes. In, in this case, it's better to ask permission than forgiveness. Yes. Basically. <laughs> <laughs> Definitely. Yeah. Um I'm just trying to look through all the all the chat, but people are asking if they should put us on the big tally. No, my makeup doesn't cope with the big tally. <laughs> but yes, you can put. I think when I start started streaming, first of all, for some strange reason, I decided to do um, Halloween makeup in one of my streams for something to do, and one of my friends watched it on like a giant full screen tally and took a picture of it. I was like. Oh, I don't want my face that big. <laughs> Never again. <laughs> yeah. But when yeah, 4K apparently... came out. It's it, it, we're not ready for 4K. Yeah. So if you're watching us in 4K, don't. Um, <laughs> just just go. Turn, turn the quality right down. <laughs> <laughs> Else we'll be sticking all the beauty filters on and everything. But actually, apparently, more and more people are watching YouTube on Tally now. I mean, my main computer screen is a 60 inch TV. So I don't even know what YouTube looks like on a little phone. Screen. I suppose that makes sense. Now, there was a time when everyone was like, actually, on Etsy, everyone was and kind of is moving to mobile a bit. It's and they were doing that on YouTube. Sorry? Now, uh, Etsy sales is now 68% on mobile. Yep. However, I did see. I can't remember. I saw a thing over Christmas and the stats, I think it was Adobe did the stats on online sales. And although there's more sales with mobile for online entirely, not just Etsy, yeah, the actual value of the sales is higher still on PC. So sure. people, which which makes sense. Like if you're going to buy something at a thousand dollars, you might want to use your computer and not just go on the phone and go, "Yep." Well, with the <laughs> so, phone, you're more likely to hit buy now versus on a computer, you're more likely to build up a cart. Yep. So it's all all different. Or at least that's how I shop. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Based on the stats on my Shopify shop as well, on mobile, the carts are always, it's usually like an instant purchase, like a buy it now type thing, instead of building up a cart and then checking all checking out at once. Yeah, yeah. And I suppose that's where sort of we're getting, it's not the difficult ones, but the people who are not reading anything, they just see the picture and go, I'll have one of them. Exactly. <laughs> um, we got a question on YouTube from... Emma at a pinch of cute. A when putting cute. your, <laughs> it's such a cute name. <laughs> I think we just looked at our shop the other week as well. It's also really? cute. Yeah. Um, when you're put, and we will be doing reviews and things, possibly at least once, maybe twice a month, but not today. We're getting your questions today. Um, when putting your item into the listing helper, is it better to be very descriptive about it or give a short description? Um, so the listing, I tend help. to go more descriptive, um, just for the sole purpose of, you know, your niche better than the AI will. So the more cues that you can give it, the more likely it is to return a better result. It'll still give a great result. Even if you, even if you're vague, it'll still kind of guess at what it is, but there'll be a lot, especially in the tags, there'll be a lot of kind of useless stuff. And the descriptions might go a little off the wall. The titles, for some reason, will always be dead on, but the descriptions and the tags might be a little slippy. And so the more information that you can give it, the better results it'll give you. Yeah, that's what I love about the Listing Helper. That's our AI tool on eRank. Um, when we've been teaching for years, using the keyword tool, you want to be very specific. People were always coming to us and saying, I put my title into the keyword tool and I'm not getting any results. And it's like, because it's not really a keyword. You, you want to start 
specific with like engagement ring and then drill down. But the listing helper is kind of the exact opposite. Type in as much as you can. Um, because at the end of the day, if you were just to put engagement ring into that, you haven't given the AI much. What it's going to do is make up stuff. It might make up really interesting stuff. It's unlikely to be relevant stuff. But the more details you put, um, and bear in mind, the listing helper is an amazing tool as a help don't just wholesale copy everything it gives you. Um, the titles are kind of good, but put them into your own style. Have your own keywords in mind that you might need to tweak it a little bit. Put, put keywords in, take things out. Um, the description, make sure it fits with your brand voice. AI can be very flowery. Sometimes yes. that <laughs> isn't necessarily your voice. And the tags especially... It's given some ideas of tags, but to kind of explain this, the AI doesn't have the data. We're adding the data afterwards. I've I've played around for quite a while swearing loudly at the AI. It doesn't learn as well as you think it does. So basically, it's spitting out what it thinks are some good ideas for tags based on what it knows. And we're going, here's the E-rank data on this. We're not saying use these tags. We're saying are these tags any good, which is a subtle <laughs> distinction, but it's such a cool tool. Like everyone should play around with a listing helper. <laughs> exactly. Uh, Britt asked, is the listing helper on the free version? I couldn't find it. It is. You only get one use on the free version per day and it's under the listings heading and then listing helper. It's the last option. Yep. Um, I do have you rank up, right? Let's, let's, let's go there. Um, so where where is this tool? It's uh, click on your hamburger menu in the top corner there. Yeah, or I was just trying to <laughs> I was trying to bigger that, but it won't. So it is is it shop listings. or listings? listings. I always it's under listings. listings. Of course, it's listings because it's helpful. Listings, listing helper. So someone give us an idea of something to look up. But we'll start with the one that I said that was bad. So wedding. Oh, I said engagement. Well, we're doing. Go away, Anthony. Um, basically the same thing. <laughs> yeah. So if we just go un unspecific, just give it a bit of nothing. Oops, it had already come up. Yep. It's because I've got my screen zoomed in so everyone can see. So it doesn't know, so it's guessing things. Handcraft rose gold wedding re ring, unique and elegant design. Is it rose gold? Probably not, but it just thought it could be. It could be cool because... This gives you some ideas. You go like, hey, I could make rose gold, but it's not very specific. Um, or again, vintage style wedding ring set. It's just giving you some ideas off the top of its head. Um, but if when you you're vague, it's going to be the, the response is also going to be vague. The more specific you get, the more specific the response will be. Yeah, this isn't a bad idea if you have no ideas at all of what to make. This is almost like asking AI, because you could put in something like that. If you make wedding rings, put in this and see, oh, is rose gold good? Is vintage style good? And then come down to the tags and have a look at, hang on, what's kind of cool? You know, look, stackable rings. We've got a whole load of other things that you might be able to make. So it's a kind of good one you know, to just to get some ideas, because it comes up with some different ideas for tags that you won't find in any of the other tools because it's completely off the wall, basically. Exactly. The keyword, the keyword tool will give you things that that are ba very Etsy based. This will give you everything in the world that they know about it, wedding rings. Um, and so the, there'll be some completely off the wall stuff, which actually might work. Yeah, it, it's thinking out of the box it's that extra little thing like you've had your ideas for keywords but at the end of the day you're probably too close to the problem you've asked your friends the same thing you've used the keyword tool and that's been great but the thing is that can that can only go down the rabbit hole that you take it down kind of thing you can get stuck you want the things that are off the wall totally different maybe materials you haven't thought of but Maybe something completely different. Exactly. It helps you step outside the box. Yep. 
Um, but it's a really cool tool. It's fun to play around with, definitely. AI in general is just fun to play around with. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I've, yeah, I've been using it a whole lot. I think I think I told Brian's that say to me. Yeah, I, I got it to review some of Brian's um, shop titles and things. It was very good. <laughs> but you do need. You don't just go, hey, Chat GPT or whatever fix this for me you you're treating it like an assistant it's like here's this thing do this and it comes back and you're like that's good but can you can you do this <clears throat> and i've started saying please and thank you because i'm afraid of the robot revolution so <laughs> it's programmed in like because i have google home all over my house and it respond when you say thank you it does respond <laughs> it does yeah i it's fun. i used to always laugh at my mum when she first got like any of the voice assistants on her phone and she'd always say thank you and now i'm kind of doing it i'm like thank I, you I do that. <laughs> yeah do it too. we all do it <laughs> all the cool kids are doing it <laughs> um i'm just trying to see what other questions we got um Sorry if I miss any questions, guys, just put them up again, but I'm going to try and get there because um, I'm not sure you're chatting amongst yourselves, which is great. <laughs> oh, here, this is a commonish one. Marina, how long from when you post on Etsy the, the item can you actually get a sale? Is it one day, one week, one month? I think about I... seven seconds, I think, is my uh, my <laughs> record so far. That's pretty good. I was going to say about an hour is, and I think my quickest one ever was something I made that I didn't really want to sell. That <laughs> this is that I'd made this horse and it took forever, so I put it up for a ridiculous price, and I was like, "Yeah, no one will buy that." Yeah, it sold the quickest. <laughs> <laughs> yep, your listings are once you hit publish, your listings are available. People might not be able to find them yet. It might still take a while to get ranked and all that type of stuff. But once you hit once you hit publish, it's now available in your store and could show up in search. Yeah, I, yeah, it's pretty quick. And also sometimes, you know, Etsy's telling followers and things, oh, Brian's just posted a new item. You might like this or something. So they can go straight up, straight away. So there's there's no time limit. Immediately when it's when it's there, it's it's there. However, I find the notifications because um, Etsy notifies the people that favorite your shop. It gives them a notification that an item was listed. That usually that's within an hour um, that it'll then say, hey, this shop has posted a new item. Check it out. But it's actually available in the shop for purchase right away. Yeah, it, it can be pretty quick, not with sales, but there's sometimes when I'm doing like tests. I was doing a little while ago just trying to list lots of items for a similar keyword all in a row and it really spoils your stats when people are coming in and favoriting things and stuff it's like, no how do you see it it's only been live two minutes <laughs> yeah, but as fast as someone could check out you can get that sale exactly um starla's letting herself go yeah <laughs> yeah start, i need to dye my hair i guess and Oh, <laughs> my yeah. fell out. <laughs> yeah, that if you're going to be on life with us, you're going to have to dye your hair. So, so what color should Brian be going, guy? <laughs> Everyone, let me know what color to make this this mess. <laughs> it still has some brown in it, but it's a it's a it's a blank white canvas, basically. <laughs> what color should I go? <laughs> oh, we've got a shout out for green. <laughs> Okay. I'm just trying to think of what colors we have left because you know, Starla, Starla's got the orange and I've got the blue and red. So mm -hmm. <laughs> yellow, I guess, is still too normal. I d I've got a friend who dyes her hair very yellow. It's great. It looks like a child's drawing of hair. <laughs> you know, how they draw a blonde person is just like a bright yellow kit. <laughs> Crayon. Love it. Teal. You got green or teal? Ooh. Teal could be nice. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Is that teal? No, that's forest blue. I don't have teal in front of me. So <laughs> it would be like, hmm. Oh, I do. That's every color. How does that look on my head? There we go. You can make yourself a wig by the end of the show. <laughs> Just 
<laughs> just that's what it would look like if it was I had a line of teal. I, I think that would work. Yep, teal sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> Artists, we um, just have colors everywhere. <laughs> yeah. uh, Carla's asking, are we answering questions from the chat or somewhere else? Yeah, if you're new here, guys, this is our professional stream today, clearly. Um, <laughs> Every week in our Facebook group, which there's a link to in the description below, on a Wednesday, I post up a chat so you can get your early bird questions in. Those are the first ones we get, giving you a chance to, I hope this seat isn't making too bad a noise, giving you a chance to get your questions in into the chat. So we answer those as a priority, first of all, and now we're hopefully getting through your questions. So we are answering them from the chat. It's just we have to find them. We have to get there. Yes. Um, it, it is difficult to read and speak at the same time. I'm not very good at multitasking here. Uh, here we go. M Mama Darling, Mar Mar Mama Darling's Marketplace. What a We're getting all the cute names. I've read different opinions about optimizing photos for Etsy and Google. Should we add our business name? Example, ABC product photo title XYZ business name. Um, I'm assuming, can you just confirm in the chat, but do you mean in the metadata like the the name of your photo or the alt text in your photo or actually on your photo that sounds more like a, a tag but um f should you be adding your business name to your photos metadata probably not in general things like the alt text is for visually impaired people um we don't have like if you're creating a blog you can also put alt text and things in that and that generally is alt text for visually impaired people as well but people do use it for seo but i think that's pretty old practices that's that's just for people who people who aren't can't see so well to get a read out what your picture is so in the metadata of your photo i definitely wouldn't worry about that on your image that that's a yes and no some people do some people don't um i what i would say more with your pictures is your style can have branding that people recognize it i think starla with her jewelry jewelry always had like a certain stone that you could see in the picture and everyone knew that was that was her thing this tends to be a better way having a set style you can add your business name but it's it it helps people see you i i've certainly seen i actually just bought a pattern because i hunted down the person because they had their shop name on the picture that had been shared around through 20 different places so it never had a link to it so that can help but yeah what's what's but Brian's also think thing? about how it looks when it's a thumbnail because that's how most people will view it um so if it can't be seen anyways or if it doesn't have anything distinctive or if it ends up ends up kind of cluttering the photo then it might actually do more harm than good um uh photos with uh watermarks and stuff like that they are usually exempt from ads so they won't be shown as off-site ads or anything like that so you can potentially be losing out on that um as far as alt text i'm i'm not it's more for describing the item um depending on what your business name is or how it fits in there you can say it's a it's a gold silver engagement ring with such and such branding on it like and throw your shop name in there that kind of thing but it doesn't really help optimize for anything and it doesn't it's not a searchable field it's not a field that's used for anything other than screen readers for the most part um so it's not really beneficial um, if someone's Google image searching, they'll find your image without that alt text. So you're not really adding anything to it by having the alt text have your, your name in there, except that for, for people who are using the, the, um, the, the tools to, to screen read, you might just confuse them, especially 
it it just it especially depending on your uh your shop name if it has nothing to do with what they're looking at that might actually confuse them just having random words being thrown in there yeah i think it used to be seo advice people are probably still putting it out there this idea that you smash your keywords in everywhere that it's not it's not necessary you're your shop name is in enough places. If you put it in in a tag, that's more than enough. Etsy already links your shop name to everything where it needs to be anyway. So. And AI, pro AI proves that it could find anything from anything. It knows who you are already. There's it's there's a lot more happening behind the scenes than what we know when it comes to these algorithms. So just just throwing your name everywhere possible doesn't necessarily get you found more and it could potentially harm as well so just be yeah careful. yeah if you try and as it were keyword stuff in places that keywords don't need stuffed but you can sort of confuse confuse or anger the algorithm like if google sees you we, we joked about playing games with the algorithms and stuff and if google sees you trying to manipulate things with keyword stuffing it can it pushing you down and down the results yeah uh, so Carla reiterated her question there. Oh, um, cool. Carla Have you Murphy, got it? I don't see. Carla Murphy said, and they confirmed this. If this is the case, why do any of us use these keyword sites if none of them receive them directly from Etsy? Um, referring to, I guess, the AI and the keyword tool. Um, Etsy does not share uh, search volume. It doesn't share click rates. It doesn't share any of that stuff, but it does give a lot of information. It tells us how many listings are using that keyword. It, it kind of breaks down a lot of stuff and that's why these tools are useful. And then it's the external data for search volume and stuff that Etsy doesn't give us. And that's why the sites are useful because you, Otherwise, we wouldn't have any access to those search volume numbers that are important. But it still needs to be linked to a listing or a keyword that exists. And that's where the Etsy API comes in and things like the keyword tool come in. Yeah, uh, um, you're, you're quite correct that Etsy doesn't give out the search data to anybody. Um, it's not just Etsy like... Amazon, HBO, none of these places are giving out this any I kind of it. data. <laughs> exactly. So although I know if if you don't know about these things, it sounds kind of dodgy, but this is actually the industry standard that we get our data from third party data providers that have large panels of people who have opted in to have their internet data shared this way, to have their searches tracked this way so although the data doesn't come directly from Etsy it comes directly from real Etsy users if that makes sense it's not every single person searching on the internet so people with cleverer stats skills than me have to extrapolate that out and say okay that's a statistically correct amount of data that we're able to tell you that's correct so it's real people doing real searches on Etsy, but it's not 100% accurate because it can't be, but it's enough to give you trends and things. That's hopefully why people use these kind of keyword tools. It gives us an idea of what real people are, are doing. Exactly. She followed up by saying that she's used other ones and she wasn't impressed. She used one that had a Chrome extension for over a year. Uh, she was thinking of E-Rank next, but didn't want to invest without asking more questions. That is also one of the beautiful things about E-Rank. And I think it's the only one other than th there might be one or two, other, but that have a free plan that's completely free. You you don't have access to every one of the tools, but you have access to like 80% of the tools. And the only thing that's limited is the amount of times that you could use it. And then any data that's paid for by E-Rank, um, like the search volume. But other than that, you could see all of the, you could see trending data, you could see lots of other information uh, with the free version. So you could actually play around to see if it's, it's kind of what you're looking for before you pay. Plus it also has, E-Rank also has the cheapest of all of the plans at, what is it, $4.99 or $5.99? Uh, $5.99. $5.99 for the basic plan. So it's not that huge investment that some of the other tools are, which is of course helpful because you might not need it for all that time. And 
I'm someone who likes to test everything before I make a huge purchase as well. So I fully understand that. Um, so try it out for free. See what is available in the free plan. See how it helps you. See how the keyword tool helps you. And just, just play with that data. Um, I don't know exactly what you're looking for or what you weren't able to find on other services, but th there is only so much data that is of that is available, especially directly from Etsy, because they want people to keep using Etsy. So they're not going to give their all of their data away for free. Um, so but but anything that's available through the API is available um, on E rank and then plus the data that's purchased through through panels of millions of people um, that represent the 90 million buyers on Etsy. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, we're, we're talking about it. The E-Rank free plan is free forever and you don't have to add your credit card details. It's not a limited free trial or something. It's an actual level that you can always use. And in general, if we're not, if you're not sure anything, we would absolutely prefer you to use the free version, get the hang of it. And then once you're seeing the limitations, you're saying, I want to search more. I want to see this data. That's the time to upgrade. So often people, um, and it's totally understandable, but they'll dive into something and sort of pay the top level and then go, it's not fixing everything for me. It's better to start right at the bottom level, learn how to use it, join the Facebook group, ask questions in there as well if you're not already in the group. And also there's a ton of videos on this channel. Erank has a blog with a ton of um tutorials and advice in there as well and we are ramping up our instagram tiktok all the things um so there's advice from all sorts of different people if you're sick of me and brian and and i believe that starla's working on a little some little secret project that might be interesting to people sometime soon but of course i i can't tell you anything about that <laughs> um marina said i pay for the basic plan i like it that that's one huge advantage is the basic plan and the pro plan and the expert plan are exactly the same except for the amount of uses that you get um and the amount of shops that you could have linked and that kind of thing but otherwise the basic plan is a complete you get every single one of the tools it's not like the basic plan is limited and then you have to step up to the pro if you want to get this tool and that tool it's literally just the amount of uses per day and the amount of shops that you can link and that's what really determines which plan works best for you yep um got one from marina this is very basic it, it absolutely isn't what's the best way to title your item word it and those keywords to get seen after doing the research i'm never sure that's not a basic question that's that's a huge question uh we'll do our best quickly but we do have videos on this in this youtube channel so when you're done here search E rank, um, how I'm sure it's just how to title your Etsy listings or something, but there isn't a right and a wrong way, <laughs> is, is the problem. If what you want to do, don't spend hours on keyword research, identify two, three, four keyword phrases that people are searching for that's relevant for your item. And the simplest thing, put those three phrases in your title. If hopefully it makes sense but put those three phrases in your title and then put them in your tags fill up the rest of your tags with other words that you think are relevant and the most important thing publish your listing and see what happens what i like to say is that titles are for people tags are for the computer so you can throw words in there you can play around you can just stuff the you can just stuff it um but the titles you want it to be clear and concise because that's what people are shopping for if you go to if you go to tiffany and co's website it's going to be very clear and concise maximum of like four to five word titles because that's all they need to tell what the product is on etsy because it's a handmade item you might need a little bit more you might want um a, a few kind of chunks of phrases um, but don't worry about keyword stuff in your title that much. Just make it so that the, the buyer knows exactly what they're getting, especially in those first 20 to 30 characters. They know exactly what they're getting and there's no confusion because once you start, once the buyer starts being like, is this, is this chair for a dollhouse or is this for my house? That's when you start, that's when they just hit the back button and go to the next shop. So you want it to yeah. be clear and concise and don't try and just, just fill it or stuff it with too much that can cause confusion. 
Yeah, that's the most important thing is it has to make sense, um, which is a cool thing. The, the only caveat, it's not even a caveat, the only thing that some people get confused when they're writing titles, especially if you're, some, if you're an artist and you're painting something and you're you're painting you've called feelings in feelings number four that's not a title that's the title of your work <laughs> that which is a different thing your title is for the humans but they need to know what it is so it's a watercolor painting in shades of blue that can be hung up in this room in the house basically rather than the the wonderful name that you've thought up for your for your item exactly Um, oh, we've got another trademark thing. I saw a trend of the quote, for the hope of it all, only to find out a minute later that it's from a Taylor Swift song. So this is not allowed. If you recognize it as from a Taylor Swift song and other people will be looking for it because it's from a Taylor Swift song, then you would need permission from Taylor Swift to use it. And I don't think you're going to get permission from Taylor Swift. <laughs> Once a piece of art is created, and that, that can be like an actual painting, that could be text, that could be anything like that, it it has a copyright on it. It's now officially copyrighted. And even though nothing's been filed to copyright it, they can still they they can still win a case against you for copyright. So you really want to watch out with anything that is recognizable. If someone yeah. else created it you generally can't use it this this is the huge problem i know we have a lot of like print on demand people here and there's nothing wrong with that it's a good thing but i know a lot of people give advice that you should be looking at the quotes that other people are using and copying them and bet but better and this is where you can end up in some big trouble basically um because the quotes might be from popular songs or books or something that are still in copyright or trademarked. Um, also, if a different person came up with it and it's cool and they're making a ton of money off it, if it's associated with their brand because they came up with it, they can physically trademark it as well. So copying quotes is a real dodgy thing to build your business on. Again, not trademark lawyer or anything, but unless you know what you're doing, I would really steer quick, clear of things like that. And what uh, uh, trademark copyright, all that type of type of stuff aside, you could just have your Etsy shop shut down for that kind of thing. And so you really want to watch out whether they come after you or not, like, like whether the trademark holder or copy holder comes after you, that's, that's something else. But the fact that Etsy can shut you down and ban you from ever creating a buying or selling account on their platform, that's where you really have to watch out. Yeah. And we see it every single day. And it's people, most of the time, it's people who didn't know bad, better because they're taking advice. People are given this advice because they think they're right. They maybe opened up a shop for three and a half minutes, had a ton of sales think it's legal and passing on this advice so people believe the advice so don't don't listen to us don't listen to them look at trademark laws yourself and it's it's a minefield it sure that's is. why i don't do <laughs> yeah I, I thought oh print on demand yeah i'll do that no 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 <laughs> it's way difficult <laughs> tip from amy on on chatty chat gpt i, I call her chatty because i like <laughs> to have names for things um to get it to write less flowery i tell it to please use friendly and approachable tone simple in language <laughs> understandable by a 12 year old there's a cool thing actually in canva you can teach canva your brand voice yeah. and it'll write copy in your brand voice i haven't tested it to know how good it is because I'm not good enough at English to know what my brand voice is, basically. <laughs> so I I just talk like me. Um, Grammarly but, has that option as well, and it's very helpful. Cool. Yeah. So if you understand these kind of things, then it's absolutely a cool thing. But there's there's a cool prompt to tell Chat GPT to tone it in a bit. Uh, or if you want to make it sound like Elvis wrote it, you can make it sound like tell it. 
make it sound like Elvis wrote it. You, you can, do can anything. indeed. Yeah, there are fun. I always ask them to make it sound like Darth Vader wrote it. Then don't <laughs> use it in your listings or anything. But <laughs> <laughs> Lara asks, can you explain what is views in Etsy? I have barely 12 a day. I'm 1.5 month old store. Do I need to change my keywords? Possibly not. Um, right. Views and visits are confusing, but similar things on Etsy. Well, they're not. Um, but views are basically that's someone clicking into your your listing. It's the easiest way way to look at it like that. I like to think of it like a physical store. So if you had a store and somebody enters your store, they're visiting your store. So that's one visit. Every single product they look at while they're in your store, that's a view. They've now looked at that product, that's a view. So one visit could be 10 views, but you would never have a view without a visit. Absolutely. Um, and barely 12 a day. There's no point saying, is this good or is this bad? If we looked at Brian's shop and said, oh, you only had 12 views a day yesterday, he would. that would be a bad day. For bad. some <laughs> other people, that would be an amazing day. That's that's what you're having just now. That's your your mark in the sand. So what you want to be thinking of is what can you do to get more. So do I need to change my keywords? Your sh your store is only a month and a half old. I probably wouldn't be thinking of changing out anything yet. I'd be still looking at building if you can, depending on what you make. This is your time to make more listings to be experimenting with different keywords in the listings in another month and a half, perhaps come back, go into your Etsy stats, see which listings were doing the best, what keywords were working for you, what types of photos were working for you, and then adapt your strategy going forward. You can maybe change up some of your listings that weren't working, think about different ranges to make. But yeah, I wouldn't be I wouldn't be running about at a month and a half trying to change everything to make it work better. Also, don't rely solely on Etsy and your keywords to get traffic. Also, think about using social media or finding other ways to get people into your store because um, as you increase traffic, you're now giving Etsy other signals of this is your target audience, which then has, has th then they know who to show your items to. So the keywords themselves don't necessarily help because you could have jewelry as a keyword if there's 11 million other listings with that, then it's still a great keyword. You're just not showing up for it because you're not at the top. So by bringing in more traffic yourself using things like social media, you're telling Etsy, these are the types of people that my products are for. And so that actually will help more than changing your keywords before you really know what's working and what doesn't. Absolutely. And it's a good point that with a brand new store, your your listings could be absolutely perfect. They're probably not because we all we all learn. <laughs> My mine were terrible to start with, but your listings mine could be still really are. good. <laughs> <laughs> oh, mine really are. Yeah, <laughs> um, your listings could be awesome. They could be good enough, but Etsy just hasn't built up that trust with you yet. The more views you get, the more it starts to learn who who your items for, and the more chance to get seen for more people it is a sort of cumulative effect so exactly i know it's for i remember way back when i remember being a month old in my shop and going where i expected to list things and people would buy them and it doesn't work like that it can Actually, take it's a definitely not thing. listed and they will come yep <laughs> um <laughs> I don't know what that was in relation to, but Brian's just showing off now. <laughs> I, I don't know when it, it was, but yeah. <laughs> that, that, that way, I should just pull that up. Was that when I did close-ups of my head? Is that me showing off my head? Yeah. <laughs> Look at... I, I think it was showing you, you showing off your, your new hairstyle with <laughs> filaments <laughs> for your printer. <laughs> Oh, thank oh, you. Oh, I'm Jeff. sorry I'm drinking so much. I, I'm just getting over a cold, so sorry the cup keeps coming in the camera, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Same here. Um, Jessica, thanks. Um, I missed a question in Facebook chat. Is it crazy not to do off-site ads? 
is it correct if you can opt out of off-site ads not all shops can for those that don't know you have to have sold if you've sold over a certain threshold you can't opt out of off-site ads it was 10,000 10, us yeah. uh 15,000 yeah. canadian i'm pretty sure it's 10,000 pounds as well I can't, I think or it, it might just be 10,000 equivalent. Yeah, it's 10,000 equivalent. I'm pretty sure. Yep. Um, so if you get over that value, you can't opt out of offsite ads, I think, unless you're in Europe. I heard things. Yeah, in the EU. Uh, yep. Um, but if you can opt out of them, it's up to you. Is it crazy not to do offsite ads? I will say I've had experience before Etsy in using proper media ads and Etsy offsite ads is kind of the most generous <laughs> advertising I've ever seen because we don't pay for it unless somebody clicks on our ad. Now, I know 15% or 12% sounds like an awful lot. It's really not in terms of facebook ads and so, like i've just sat and watched someone who's who's starting a brand new store who knows about these kind of things set 600 dollars for his first week budget for instagram ads and got two sales yeah. <laughs> and he knows what he's doing so you know if it doesn't work for you switch it off but it is a very good deal um honestly I'm a huge fan of offsite ads. Uh, in the last 30 days, your sh shoppers clicked on your offsite ads 2,700 times and placed 30 orders. That's 30 orders that potentially would have never seen. It's 2,700 more people that have seen my listings that potentially would have never seen them. And it does cost 12% when someone made a purchase, but, um, but I've also been tracking those people. And over the last three years, uh, it's it's over 36% right now have come back and made at least one further purchase after the 30 days that I'd still be charged the offsite ad fee. So if you're building customers for life, if you have an item that if, if you have a shop that people keep coming back and, and you get a lot of repeat buyers, offsite ads are absolutely amazing. If you're selling, I don't know, armoires like $10,000 armoires, then they might not be that great because you're not going to get as much repeat business. You're not, you're, that sale is not going to really prompt more sales because on Etsy, sales beget sales. The more sales you get, kind of the higher your listings rank and the offsite ad sales count towards that as well. So if you can get sales from offsite ads, it's actually helping you on Etsy as well. Um, so I see them as a good thing, but you're going to have to determine for your shop whether they're they're beneficial or not yeah absolutely um and that's a great point about trapping these customers you know having them as repeat buyers you can also get them to sign up to your mailing list yep. if your strategy quite a lot of people start on etsy and they're planning to springboard from etsy and open their own shop well you've just had etsy pay for the off-site ads to find these people that you can then take to your own shop later. And I promise you to pay for the Google ads, the Facebook ads, the Instagram ads to actually have got seen by that person would have cost you a lot more <laughs> than yeah. what Etsy's charging you. It, it sounds like a lot, but honestly, if you actually look into these offsite ads and try and do them yourself, it's, it's a very expensive nightmare. <laughs> And if your products are approximately the same price, really at 15%, you just have to build 1.5% into your items because uh, Etsy's average is one in 10 sales will come from offsite ads. You build 1.5% into all your items and now you've actually offset the price of offsite ads. Exactly. It's not much if you roll it into your entire business. I think the problem that people have is they're, they're not necessarily expecting. Sale. Yeah, they see the one sale, especially... The, the worst case, it doesn't happen often, but it does happen, is that a person's very first sale is from off-site ads yeah. and you get a very nasty surprise. You might already have not calculated what your fees are going to be and then suddenly there's 15% on top of these fees that you weren't expecting. So make sure and figure out how much actually selling on Etsy is going to cost you and take into account these extra things. But is it crazy not to do off-site ads? For many people, 
not crazy, but you don't have to do them, but it could be a cool thing. I think it's crazy not to look into them and see if they work for your for for your particular business model. Is it crazy to turn them off? No. For some industries, it just doesn't work, or some types of stores, it just doesn't work. Um, but I think it's crazy to not even look into it and see if it would work for you. Absolutely. Uh, we have one from Anoush, if I said your name right. Hi, all. Are you a strong advocate of launching full product lines on Etsy? For example, perhaps 30 listings pertaining to the dog apparel in order to get more keywords out there. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Um, if you can, I love the idea of this very much. If you find a few keywords that sound good, I love the idea of launching a range around it because Starla's not here. So we're going to steal her analogies though. This is like, if you just listed, if you found a great keyword and just made one item, that's like going down to the lake and putting one, one hook in the water, through, cast, in, cast in one line. But if you make... 30 listings if this is something you can do you're putting 30 rods into the water so you have a much better chance of seeing if something works because to be perfectly honest people hate this but doing all your seo and everything there's it's it's science but there's a little bit of luck as well because the right person who loves your item has to be searching on etsy at the time that etsy decides to show your item um so the more hooks you have in the water, the more chance of being lucky and being seen at the very right point. So. Also, if somebody likes an item but doesn't like it exactly, then they actually have variety as well. Um, I also love doing full product launches because then you could do a proper launch on social media. You're not just dropping one product being like, hey, buy my one product. You can you can milk that for two weeks of of hyping it up. This this is coming. These are coming. Oh, and and then people have choice, and you got the whole range. And it just for marketing purposes, doing a full product line is a lot better. And on Etsy, if somebody if, if somebody wants it in blue and you didn't release it in blue, you're gonna lose the sale potentially. If you have it in blue, if you have it, if you have other variations of it, then you kind of win absolutely and if you've got those kind of followers quite a lot of shops on etsy have the kind of avid followers that will want every color yep. you know so that's <laughs> that's a cool thing sure. to have if you just make one but and i know it can take a while to build up the kind of followers to do that but always you know the the phrase "fake it till till you make it" and stuff really works in this kind of thing. If you're doing your social media and everything, act like your followers are there, behave like you're talking to them, and they'll start coming in. Basically. But also, people like choice. If you go into a pet store and you're looking for a leash, they don't just have one leash because people like their their own colors. They like different thicknesses, different shape. They they want kind of a whole range and. In, in this instance with dog apparel, yeah, there everyone wants something unique. So having more than one, like dropping more than one product at once is definitely a great idea. Yeah. And the other, like, if you go into the pet shop, this, people will often do one listing and go, oh, but I can do it in others. Just ask me. I can do other things. If you go into a pet shop, store that only has one dog lead, you won't go, oh, can you do it in this, that, and the other thing you'll go to the next one down the street that you can pick up and see all the all the different ones okay. and that's kind of the same on Etsy if someone wanted it in green they're probably searching for green if someone wanted a dog lead for a doberman they'll probably click past your pic picture with a chihuahua and they <laughs> your cat thinks you're talking <laughs> you're sure talking to them <laughs> I'm just seeing where sorry if I'm missing any questions. And while you're looking, like it's it's great for holidays as well. If you're dropping one holiday item, you're less likely to be seen than if you're doing a whole holiday launch of 30 items or 10 items or however many items, you're just gonna get found a lot easier. Um, because you do have the keyword diversity, but also you're you're also with 
some of the keywords that are amongst all those listings, you're now dominating the search results, which is not a bad thing either. Absolutely. Um, okay, we are kind of out of time, but we'll just just get, should we get one more? Um, yeah, so Eric, well, you. <laughs> what about when E-Rank gives you an A, B, C, or D? Is that just the titles? Uh, that would be in the listing audit tool. And the listing audit tool, it's not just your titles. It's scoring you based on several factors that are from best practices from the EATC Ultimate Guide. It's not telling your listings, you, your listings great. It's telling you, you don't have any obvious spelling issues. You've used up all your tags. You've used up the right amount of photos and things. So it's it's a handy thing. The list. I just use the list in order to be, did I make any dumb mistakes? It's not going, your SEO is great. You've picked great keywords. It's going, you didn't spell things wrong. Well done, Pam. You know, and that that is that is a big issue that I've got spelling things wrong. Yeah. But it, yeah, the the grades are an overall best practice for the entire listing, not just the titles, not just the tags. It doesn't grade the content; it just grades um, kind of the format and the best practices. So it won't t won't tell you is that title good. It'll just tell you, yep, your title is the right length. Your title has no spelling mistakes. You have, you're not using single word tags. It'll give you all that information, but it doesn't tell you if you're using good keywords or that your title is good or that your description is good or your photos are good. It's just telling you that you filled in all the fields properly, essentially. Yep. That's, that's the best way to look at it. It's, it's a cool tool, but you use it in conjunction with the other tools. Like you use the yep. keyword tool to find good keywords. Um, yeah. Okay, guys, I hope that helped. That went in really fast today. <laughs> and I hope I haven't missed anyone. But if I have, there's links to the Facebook group where you can ask your questions there. You can also get them in in my early bird post on a Wednesday, and then we'll get them next time. And sorry if we missed them. And I think we might be doing some kind of listing review next week. So you want to put that in your diary. We might be. Miss that. <laughs> I don't know. We might review your shop, Brian. Who knows? <laughs> Let's not do that. I, you know what? I'm not available in it. I'm not even going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks okay. for joining us, everyone. Okay. Thank you so much. See you next week, everyone.